Hey guys, welcome back to my garage in episode five of Building a Budget Beast, the vlog series where I take you through what I did when I turbocharged my Honda Accord. Now I wanna take a second to talk to the few hundred of you that have already actually seen this video. Um, I, for those of you that don't know, I had some trouble in editing, some technical difficulties, and uh, not only did I lose the video once, but I lost it twice. So um, to all of you guys that uh, came to the video and uh, commented and liked the video. Um, I know it's frustrating. I'm going to have to ask you one more time to please redo your comments, uh, re-like the video if you like the video because I lost everything. In this episode, I want to cover gauge theory and we're actually going to install an electronic fuel pressure gauge inside the Turbo Honda. So I also want to take a second and talk to all my subscribers and anyone that views any of my videos and say thank you. The channel's been uh, growing at a good rate and uh, I wanted to give back. And so we're doing a t-shirt giveaway. I'm giving away a really couple of cool uh, uh, IMG Filmworks uh, Turbo uh, t-shirts with uh, the, the IMG Filmworks Turbo logo. If you want to enter that, um, just uh, comment in this video. That's all you have to do. Any comment will do. You just uh, make a comment, ask a question. If you don't know what to say, just write t-shirt uh, so I know to enter you for it. Make sure that um, I am able to reply to you via private message in YouTube because uh, when I select the uh, random winner, uh, winners, uh, when we hit 5,000 subscribers, I'm going to contact you through YouTube. And if I can't contact you, then I'll have to move on to the next person. Okay, with that said, let's get into the video. Today, I want to talk about the three critical gauges that I think are just uh, super important to my low boost setup. The first gauge is a boost gauge. Now, I know a lot of you guys are going to say, hey, man, that's a no brainer, a boost gauge, come on. But there's a lot of cars out there that I've seen that don't have boost gauges. And beyond that, they're fun to look at, because they are fun to look at. It's, it's probably the most fun gauge to look at. Uh, you know, you look at it when it goes into positive boost and all the hard work you've done to, to build a system that will actually put positive uh, boost inside your motor. As soon as you see that go into the uh, positive, you're like, yeah, man, look, I'm boosting. And it's, and it's awesome, you know? But they're actually a very functional gauge and they can keep you out of a lot of trouble. And let me tell you what I mean. If you have an issue like a wastegate fails, for example, and you don't know what boost level you're running, these turbochargers are capable of putting out a lot more boost than what uh, my setup is set for. So if you just smashed down the uh, accelerator and you didn't have a boost gauge and something had happened to your wastegate, you could uh, overboost the car huge numbers and, and really do some damage. So uh, a boost gauge not only will keep you out of trouble that way, but it is also good for uh, seeing if you have a boost leak or boost creep. You know, if all of a sudden, you know, you're, you're uh, you know, for the last month, you're hitting right at five PSI, and then you start to see six or, you know, seven, something like that, you know that you're getting some boost creep. Uh, so there, there's really a lot of information you can gather by looking at that boost gauge beyond the cool factor of having it. So that's the first gauge. Okay, the second gauge that we want to look at uh, that I think is critical to my boosted setup is an air fuel ratio gauge. So there's two types of air fuel ratio gauges, a wide band and a narrow band. The difference between the two is the amount of voltage they read from the air fuel mixture from the O2 sensor through the ECU. The narrow band gauge reads a 0.1 of a volt, like what I have in the car. The wide band gauge reads half a volt. Now, you can, as you can see, that's five times the information and it's a lot more accurate gauge. A lot of people will say, oh, a narrow band's not worth anything. But in my opinion, I don't think that's really true. For a setup like my car, what I use the air fuel ratio gauge, the narrow band specifically, Four is an idiot light and it works excellent for that. Basically, when your gauge is in the green, uh, in the rich side of the gauge, you're good to go. You can make that go, no go decision. Uh, you can stay in boost and, and have fun with the car. But if that gauge ever starts to read off to the lean and the red, you get out of it. That's all I use that gauge for, and it's very critical for that. Because if you know you start boosting and all of a sudden that gauge is pegged in the lean, uh, if you don't get out of it, you could do some serious damage. And the third gauge I'm gonna talk about today is the one we're actually gonna install, and that's the fuel pressure gauge. Now there's two types of fuel pressure gauges. There's a mechanical gauge, and there is an electronic fuel pressure gauge. The electronic gauge is what you would install inside the cockpit of a car, which is what we're going to do today. The mechanical gauge is, is simply that. It's just a mechanical gauge that's hooked to a fuel source um, out in front of the firewall. Uh, I have mine hooked to a fuel pressure regulator. You'd never want to put a mechanical gauge inside, ever. An electronic fuel pressure gauge, as you may have guessed, uses an electronic sending unit. So that sending unit is what sits on the rail and measures that pressure, just like the mechanical gauge. But then what happens is through wires, the uh, signal is electronically transmitted to a gauge inside the cockpit. The reason a fuel pressure gauge I think is really important is because you know you want to start monitoring uh, fuel pressure on a setup with an FMU, at least I do. 
If I had a problem with my fuel pump or the FMU, uh, then it could be very bad news and, uh, you know, car go boom kind of thing. If all of a sudden the fuel pump starts to fail, you're gonna see that immediately. If all of a sudden your FMU is not working correctly, you're gonna see that immediately. And that's why I think that gauge is super important to have as well. Okay guys, so those are the three gauge and that's the theory behind why I think they're important. Right now, let's go ahead and get right into the install. Before getting started, I grounded the sending unit. As you can see, I used a hose clamp and grounding wire. Without this wire, the unit will not function correctly. Next, I mated the sending unit to the straight barb fitting I will install in the fuel line. The best way to do this is with a fuel resistant sealant like Permatex number two. Apply a small amount to the threads, being careful not to use too much. Then I screwed the sending unit into the fitting and snugged it up but I was careful not to over tighten or you could damage the threads. Next, I cut the fuel line where I was going to install the sending unit. In my case, I put it right between the fuel pressure regulator and the FMU. Then it is just a matter of slipping the fitting into the fuel line and tightening the hose clamps. Remember, when tightening hose clamps, not to apply too much pressure. Tighter does not always mean better. In fact, if you go too tight, the line could actually leak. Next, do a final check to make sure everything's good to go. After installing the fitting, I moved inside the car to the actual gauge. I needed to run wires through the console of the car where it will be mounted. To do this, get yourself a coat hanger and attach the wires to it with some tape. The coat hanger is rigid, yet small enough to run wires almost anywhere inside the car. Using my coat hanger, I simply fished the wires through the side of the console and pulled them out the other side. Once the wires were accessible, I was able to run them under the dash and splice them into the system. Red and yellow goes to a 12 volt accessory source with black running to ground. It is always a good idea to solder wires for longevity. Next, I needed to fish the green wire through the firewall and to the back of the gauge. To do this, I simply used my coat hanger and pushed it through the grommet in the firewall. Next, I attached a spool of green wire to the end of the coat hanger and pulled it back through the firewall and into the engine compartment. With the wire through, I soldered a push connector on the end that will attach to the sending unit. Then I simply push the connector onto the back of the gauge. Now I had to ground the whole sending unit. This is where installing the grounding wire first makes things super easy. All I had to do was remove a screw on the firewall, solder a connector onto the end of the ground wire, and reinstall it back on the firewall. Easy peasy. Then I moved inside the car and soldered the green wires together. I always use shrink wrap over all wire joints for protection, but electrical tape will work fine too. Then it was just a matter of tidying up the wires and getting them back under the dash. For this, zip ties are your friend. All that was left to do was mount the gauge. I elected to use double-sided tape for this. When mounting with tape, go slow and be accurate so you don't mount the gauge crooked. Now 
Now it was time to test the gauge to make sure everything was working correctly. I use a manual system to control the FMU, and as you can see, the gauge now lets me know exactly what my fuel pressure is doing. Okay guys, so that's it for episode five, gauge theory and installation. Even though we did a fuel pressure gauge today, all gauges are similar and it's a similar technique, so you shouldn't have any problem installing any type of gauge. I wanna say thank you again to all my subscribers and anyone that views the video. Hey, if you just stumbled across the video and you haven't become a subscriber, click the link above and become one. Also remember the t-shirt giveaway, uh, just as my way of saying thanks when we hit 5,000 subscribers. Make sure you just leave a comment, any comment will do. A question, comment, and if you don't know what to say, just write t-shirt. And remember, I need to be able to reply to you in YouTube to figure out where you want the uh, shirt sent. So with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and until next time, I'll see you right back here inside my garage.